take the pressure off of what we might get for weather on Tuesday, uh, we're going to roll with it. So stay tuned. Make sure if you're uh, planning to leave site, you check in uh, to make sure that you're done skiing for the day. Uh, we'd hate to have you leave and, and miss an event or have to call you back. So uh, if you if you think you're done for today, just please check in with uh, the judges and make sure or the the uh, tournament director and make sure that uh, your your events won't get moved into today from uh, out outward days uh, listed later in the week. Again, if you are a team manager, please report to the announcer's tower down by the cage. I like that term, the cage. And once again, it looks like we're still looking for our Team China skiers. All righty, folks, so we are kicking off our open women's slalom prelims now. Paola from Italy seems to be our first lady on the dock. So here she comes now into the pass. So we got 15 ladies, I mentioned, folks, in this event. Big number of people. Um, so 12 skiers are going to be going through to the second round. And Paola's looking strong there on her first run. Skiing all the way down. Our ship shore's back up and running. She's got some nice one-foot slalom coming on here. Oh, and goes down. Yeah, what, how far down uh, the run were we with that? 
Uh, okay. that, that stream just kicked on a little late. I'm going to guess okay. she was about five crossings okay. in. Yeah, it looks like she caught a foot there on approach to the wake and, and went down. So we got 15 ladies in the event, Rod. Um, so eight skiers, sorry, nine skiers will be advancing to the second round out of this group. I don't know where that stands with the Chinese, um, how that plays into it. Our three Chinese skiers are not present yet. Um, if so, that could affect it from 15 to 12, which means maybe only eight skiers will go through. So we'll have to stay posted there and see what the deal is. I see t China's just turned up. So anyone at the start, Doc? China is here. So yeah, f it looks like a uh, score out of the boat is 4.3 for Paolo. We're getting scores back out of the boats, folks. So we'll be able to give you guys provisional updates as the event runs on. Um, so that 4.3 for Paolo was probably a 4.6. And uh, just falling on that 0.6 portion, giving her that 0.3 deduction. Yeah, so it look looks like the Chinese are here. They're hustling them in. It looks like they're going to be able to ski. Everybody down the dock, give them a round of applause. They made it. They're here. They're ready to rock and roll. So we will be running all 15 ladies, it looks like. Yeah, excellent. excellent. Yeah, it, it's always tough when you're running ahead of schedule. You know, we're, t like you said, two hours ahead of schedule. You think you have time you <laughs> take off to try to grab some lunch or whatever and <laughs> all of a sudden you find yourself scrambling <laughs> yeah, suddenly it's oh, oh no we're going back on a full stomach now and get back out there and do some more skiing all right so we're back up and running folks uh streams just kind of in and out a little bit so bear with us here it looks like powerless i'm thinking that's a fourth crossing coming in there's number five. I'm going to guess that's number six there. A little skating. Those legs get a little wide there, Rod. Two foot crosses, left to right, right to left. Got a nice base going there. You know, that's a good stable two foot cross position. And uh, Paula's scored a 7.5 at the 2017 ENA Barefoot Championships most recently. And that, that's close to her PB of 7.6. So. 4.3, we heard the judges say, for the first pass score. Um, yeah, it could could be close. You know, uh, if you're doing a comfortable pace backwards on two, usually you get six crosses. So it sounds like uh, 2.3 there for Paolo on a second pass, giving her a total score of 6.6. .6. Uh, so right around the realm of what she's not quite what she's really capable of doing, but right around the realm of her past history scores there, Rod. So uh, I, I'm assuming right now it looks like we're going to be going to Terry Larson-Jones. Um, and I, mean I guess they'll probably fill the Chinese back into the event as we go further down here. That would be my guess. Give them a little time to get their suits on and get their uh, mental game on, get prepped. So, uh, as Ben said, we've got Terry Larson-Jones from the USA, next skier on the water. Terry Jones coming up forward. She can out to the right side of the wake and a start on her right side, skiing right to left. And there's a nice one foot cross. Cross number one, another one foot. There's one foot, uh, lost the uh, image here. Uh, yep, there we go. Still standing up, looks like a good pace for Terry Jones. And I believe she made it down to the end. We kind of had the uh, video feed coming and going there, but it looked like a good solid pass. So 
Yeah, we're just patching in and out a little bit, but uh, the, the judges are giving us provisional scores out of the votes. So we should be able to give you guys what they saw here pretty shortly. Yeah, again, so this is open women's, right? And we've got some seniors and probably some, we have some juniors skiing in this division we as well. We do, yeah. The likes of uh, Alex Youngblood, Lexi McCauley. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a mixed mixed bag of age um, groups here in this. in this. So 5.7 there for Terry Larson Jones on her first pass. So that's a lot better than... Uh, what she had already, I think, in uh, the senior woman's slam, she ended up with a score, I think, 9.1. So just a 3.5 backwards is going to bump her past that score. Yeah, so let, let's talk a little bit, Ben, about, as we just discussed here, we've got juniors, seniors, and elite team skiers in this division. So... Um, can you explain to the audience what you know what it means for the juniors and seniors here? None of this counts towards their juniors and senior scores. They're skiing for open. What does it mean for team points? So that's take that's us through right. that. So the uh, the independent skiers, anyone who's skiing here as a junior or senior, if they've got an asterisk next to the name, that means they're an independent skier in this event. Um, and basically, that means they're just skiing independently for themselves. So they're they're skiing in open, either maybe for a couple extra runs of the tournament or you know, they want to really try and push and see if they can take a medal in the open category as well. Um, oh, it looks like we got our skier back, Terry Larson Jones, coming in for run number two. Um, really struggling to see what's on the TV here, Rod, but it looks like she's coming now, slalom. Yeah, uh, we've got Terry with back one foot crosses here, holding that foot up nice and high. Uh, looks like down towards the end of the run, they're probably out of time, but. I'm hearing a lot of cheering down there, a lot of flags waving, U.S. flags. Uh, it sounds like a good pass, a, a, a pretty good run there I think for Terry be, Larson I think she'll be happy with that. So she's one of the ones here with the asterisks next to her name, so like we're saying. She's an independent skier, so she's skiing the slalom event. Um, her points don't go towards the senior division. It's just the open division, and she's not giving any points to the team either. So she's just skiing this event independently for herself, see if she can break into the finals, maybe get a, a medal or something like that if things things go well. Right. So as as you mentioned, Ben, we do have we've got the Chinese ladies on site. I'm not sure if they're Yep. It looks like the Chinese ladies might be on the starting dock. So uh, given the numbers we're looking at taking eight to the finals out of the fifteen skiers. All right, so it looks like Lauren Ehlers is next on the water here. Another independent skier from USA. There's a whole lot of red, white, and blue around this site here, Rod. <laughs> yeah, there is. Everywhere I look, the start dock, down at the village there, yeah, off to my right. Can't say that it's all uh, USA. I've seen some Great Britain, red, white, and blue here. <laughs> there's, there's a bit of a mixture going on. So here comes Lauren in for a first pass now. She's capable of slalom up over 10, really strong in the Fords here. So let's see what she can do on the world stage. Coming back for two crossings, coming straight back again. There's three. Here she goes again, coming in for four. There's five. Nice pace from Lauren here, really strong pace, looking really clean. Six. There's seven crossings, so I'm going to guess time's going off right around that six to seven mark. So I think that's a really nice run there from Lauren Ehlers. She's going to be happy with that, and... Um, if she can get into the sixes, I know she's capable of four plus backwards and punching into the the ten mark again. And that's a place where. <laughs> so there you go, Rod. Five point eight on Lauren's first pass. So just shy of that six, but all clean, all paid crossings, and a, and a really good pace there for her as well. I think she'll be happy with that. Yeah, that was a beautiful effort there for Lauren Ehlers. Um, Skeeta a 10-6 uh, this year at the S South Central Regionals in the uh, U.S. and uh, has been a 
you know, Lauren's been an age division national champ in the USA. Good skier, has a great uh, group of skiers around her. Skis with husband Landon Ehlers, who is going to be competing in the open men's division. Uh, Blake Ehlers, who you've seen uh, uh, jump jumping. here earlier. So th they all ski together. Uh, Cameron Ehlers, another uh, young lady who is a U.S. national overall champion. They kind of have a nice group of training partners do, and, yeah. and push it pretty hard so lauren uh lauren kind of married into barefooting <laughs> um and joined the family it's pretty cool history there she actually uh she went to texas a&m um and joined the water ski team there where landon Ealers himself went and they became friends on the water ski team and landon actually ended up teaching lauren to barefoot and uh everything just kind of rolled from there I think Rick Moyes was part of the reason that they got married, but um, Lana was definitely the reason that she got into barefooting and she's here today skiing. So the message there is you don't really need a puppy to score a <laughs> girl. You can uh, just teach them how to barefoot and it's over with, right? That's right. It'll go one or two ways. <laughs> Good to know. Roses so and chocolates, diamonds are highly overrated. Stick with the barefoot program. That's right. Keep it simple. A little bit of neoprene goes a long way. So here comes Lauren now, really high foot there. She's really well known in the U.S. for keeping that foot super, super high and clean. She's a judge herself, so she knows she's going to keep it up. There's three crossings, looking really steady too. There's four. Nice run here from Lauren Ehlers. There's crossing number five, and the boat shuts down there. Really nice run from Lauren. Skis up, skis down, handle at both ends, Rod. I'm yeah, sure she'll be happy with that. So I, I think y I think you called at least five, Ben, probably. So that's going to be, if it's five, uh, that's going to be right right there close to the PB. Anything over that is definitely going to be a PB. Did you see five crosses or more than five crosses? Uh, I, I don't know if it was five or seven crosses we saw there. That uh, The camera was a little hard to see at the start. Um, they like looked I good said, to I me. The, they were good. I thought the crosses were nice. The foot was up. The... Um, Lauren picked the foot up plenty early, it looked like, rode it through the wake. Uh, really good skiing there. Yeah, very, very clean, very tidy skiing there from Lauren. So as we wait for the uh, provisional score out of the boat and the judges, we'll see what she gets in that second part. We've got, uh, here's some cheering for Team China. I think we've got the Chinese ladies uh, on the dock and in the water. I believe this is uh, Zhen Kun Duan from China. There it is. Standing up, uh, skiing out. Nice job there. Kind of stood up partially on the wake and skied out to the right side. There's a nice two foot cross. Oh, went down after, got a complete two-foot cross in. So full credit for the two-foot cross and then looked like caught a foot uh, in transition coming back on pass number two. But very nice start there for Zen, uh, Zen Kun Duan. Uh, really good three-point start there. You can see she was just really in control. Uh, had her uh, actually look like she had the wake in between her feet and was riding on top of it and then just skied it right out to the right side. Okay, that's a 0 0.4 first pass score for Zen Kun Duan of China in the open women's slalom preliminary event. Well, looking back at the last world championships in 2016, uh, the gold medalist in this event uh, with an 18.0 was uh, Ashley Stebbings. 
And in that World Championships, uh, taking the silver event uh, was Georgia Groen with a 16.8 out of New Zealand. And it appears like that uh, Brooke Fitch had a 15.6 to capture the bronze. So uh, interesting enough, that's exactly the way the seedings are set up here for this preliminary round with Ashley, uh, the top seed, Georgia, the second, and Brooke in the third seed position. So preliminary round, we're going to take eight skiers out of the 15, move those to the Friday finals, where we'll ski for bronze, silver, and gold medals. Skier on the water, pass number two. Oh, we've got uh, a handle behind the boat with no skier. I didn't see the start. Next skier on the water is going to be Mei Ling Yu from China, who we saw earlier today in the junior ladies trick event. So 15 skiers in this. So we'll be taking the top nine. Okay, we got the skier in the water, going to be Mei Ling Yu from China. I have not gotten uh, provisional scores yet from the skiers who have already skied. I've got some first pass scores. Mei Ling Yu, China, coming up forward, pass number one. And, oh, stood up. Looks like uh, had some trouble getting outside the wake. Let's give her a round of applause. Give her some encouragement out there. After Mei Ling, uh, we bring Mei Ling down to the uh, other end of the lake to set up for her second pass. We're going to have Lu Zhu from China. Next skier on the water. Okay, we've got Mei Ling in the water. 
Getting ready for pass number two. We've got the open men's jump event starting after immediately after this event. Want to take some time to recognize our platinum sponsor of the 2018 World Barefoot Water Ski Championships. A huge thanks to Lennox Fencing for backing and supporting this event. Oh, and we missed, uh, Mailing missed the second start, it looks like, so uh, she'll get a uh, pleasure ride from the jet ski back down to the starting dock, and we'll bring out Lu Zhu from China as the next skier on the water. Gorgeous day here at uh, Dream Lake in Napanee, Ontario, Canada. What a beautiful spot we have here for the 2018 World Barefoot Water Ski Championships. We saw a pending world record set earlier today, I believe it was, for uh, Rachel Norman in the senior women's wake slalom. 14.2. Conditions are skier friendly. Got a couple things going on today uh, on site. From one to four, there's a car rally here uh, out by the driveway. Tonight there will be a fish fry on site. Uh, at the merchandise garage and uh, picnic tables. Um, and then uh, there's going to be an evening performance. Kim Pollard's going to be on the stage, uh, the music stage, where uh, we had great music last night. Uh, really enjoyed Smitty Kingston there last night, some great country music. Did a wonderful job. So uh, come on out and have some, uh, enjoy some fish and uh, some great music this evening. And check out the, the car show here this afternoon. Got Lu Zhu in the water representing China. Okay, oh, launched out the front. Wow. Looked like she wanted to hang on to that. Uh, got the arms, got the plant. Looked like maybe healed in a little bit. It's tough. You see a lot of skiers cheeking out. Uh, we say cheek out when they slide out on their butts, uh, going outside the wake, right or left, and then stand up. Uh, the plants are a little easier there when you get the prop wash back behind the boat. If you don't um, plant your feet flat and you put your heel in, sometimes you can get launched a little bit like that. Looks like... Uh, Lou got uh, pulled out the front there. I saw the arms get extended out. She, uh, tough, tough uh, young lady, uh, hit the water with her chest and, and uh, kind of did the 
superwoman fly there at the end, but uh, she seems to be okay heading back down the lake for her second pass. So we got a little bit out of order here. We're going to be jumping back uh, up to the seventh spot, uh, having Steffi Kirsch from Germany next on the water, followed by our special Canadian skier, um, Becky Moines Meyer, who's done a great job helping out with this tournament. What a tremendous effort by that young lady, uh, both um, representing her country as a skier, but being such a instrumental person and help pull this uh, big event off so hats off to Becky for everything she's done uh, to make this happen Okay, we've got Lou up, uh, standing it up, skiing out to the right side of the wake. And here she goes. Uh, okay. Kind of getting the approach. Uh, riding it right now in the curl, but I did see a transition towards the wake, so that'll score. But just going to ride it out, look like a stand-up sit down there. And just hanging on and let go, enjoyed the ride down the lake, so... Lu Zhu from China. It's Steffi Kirsch next on the water. This is her second time today uh, wake slaloming behind the boat. Uh, we saw Steffi earlier put up an 11.2. Stephanie can improve on that 11.2. Uh, score that she had uh, scored earlier today. Got nine skiers left in this division, nine skiers moving on to the finals. Or the next, excuse me, this is open, so to the next round of the open competition. We'll have another. Uh, and there we go. Steffi Kirsch, Germany. Pass number one. And I'm not seeing the image on the screen. I apologize for that. Anyway, uh, nine skiers out of the 15 move on to the semifinals, which are going to take place on Thursday of this week. Uh, excuse me, no, for women's slalom. On Wednesday of this week, we'll have the women's slalom semifinals. So we'll have nine of these ladies move on, and then we'll pair that down uh, for the finals on uh, the open women slalom finals are Saturday morning.
Sounds like that was a 5.5 first pass score for Steffi Kirsch out of Germany. And again, that was an 11.2 that Steffi put up earlier today in the preliminaries to advance for the senior women's event uh, to advance to those finals on Friday. And it looks like uh, Steffi is up on the water, coming in for pass number two, skiing out. There she goes, uh, skiing left to right, one foot cross. There's a nice one foot cross on pass two, another one foot cross on three, four, getting a little wide. Uh, looks like she's skiing it out there. Okay, stand up pass for Steffi Kirsch out of Germany. We have a second pass score of 4.5 for Steffi Kirsch for a total uh, uh, provisional score of Here we go, Becky Moinsmeyer, Canada. Pass number one coming up. Starting out on her right side. Getting comfortable, taking her time. There's cross number one. Nice one foot cross, cross two. Going into three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Still skiing all the way down the lake. Eight crosses and riding it out at the end. I'm not sure what was in time. Taking a look at uh, Becky's scores, 2017 Canadian Open, the last tournament she skied, uh, an 11.2. Has been in the 12s a number of times. The open men's jump event will follow this event, and we will start that event at 1.30. So at 1.30, we need, if you are scheduled in the running order for the open men's group three jump, we will be starting that right after this event at 1.30.
Becky Moinsmeyer on the water, pass number two. Coming in backwards, left, right to le left to right. There we go, pass two, three looks good. And I think she started a little earlier. Solid stand up run for Becky. Next gear. On that was a 5.5 uh, second pass score for Becky Moines Meyer. I did not get the first pass score. I'll have that for you uh, as soon as the boat gives that to me. Next gear in the water is going to be Sarah Linton from New Zealand. Sarah competed in the 2016 World Barefoot Water Ski Championships where she scored a 12.3 in the Wake Slalom event. Sarah Linton on the water, pass number one. And I'm not seeing video, I apologize for that. Sarah skied 12 plus in a number of tournaments in the Wake Slalom event. Skied an 11-6 in her last tournament in New Zealand Open Nationals this year in 2018. And a couple 12s, a like to thank some of our gold sponsors for the 2018 World Barefoot Water Ski Championships here in Napanee, Ontario, Canada. I want to thank the Ontario Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport, Barefoot International, Bay Marine, Camel Sink, Fitzgibbon Construction, Devlin Auto Group, Gananaqua Chevrolet, Hardington Equipment, Inmar Marine Engines, Midas Auto Service of Kingston, Sanger Boats, Shell and Pools and Fresh Crete, Taggart Constructions and Tamarack Development, and a big thanks to TCO Agromat, Agromat Mart. Okay, we've got tow boat uh, in motion. Sarah Linton, pass number two. Skiing uh, one foot crosses, right to left, both sides. A little bit of a pause there on the last cross. Uh, right to left is coming really nicely. Uh, yeah, there, she's dialed in. Good stand up pass there for Sarah Linton. A little bit of a pause on uh, one of the last crosses, but uh, pretty good flow most of the way there. It was a 4.2 second pass score for Sarah Linton.
Next gear in the water is going to be Svenja Hempelman from Germany. And that's This is going to be Svenja's second trip out waking today. Skied in the uh, senior women's uh, division earlier, putting up a, a, thir a score of 13.1. Trying to improve on that. Svenja Hempelman, Germany, on the water. Pass number one coming up forward. Okay, we got a lost, we got a floating handle there. I, I didn't uh, quite see what happened. Something happened there. We got that run cut short. Okay, I'm hearing something from the boat uh, along the lines of uh, like a 1.6. So we had an early fall for Svenja Hempelman. Um, Svenja's going to, she's going to ski into the finals of the senior women's event for Wake Slalom on Friday. So you'll see more of Svenja in this event uh, competing for a medal. Got a great chance. Actually, one of our medalists at the last world championships in 2016. Benya Hempelman coming up past number two. Coming up backwards, skiing out to the left side of the wake. Setting up in the curl. And there's pass number one. One foot. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Looks like a pretty good rhythm here. Seven. Nice pace, picking up that foot. Yeah, good run. Good second run for Svenja Hempelman of Germany. Immediately after this event, uh, final skier, Ashley Stebbings, once Ashley's done, there will be a team manager meeting over by the uh, judges stand over there on the east end of the lake. So uh, please, team managers, report to the judges area at the east end of the lake following the open women's preliminary round of slalom. We've got five skiers coming up. We're going to bring out Alex Youngblood, USA, next skier on the water. Followed by Lexi McCulley, Brooke Fitch, Georgia Grown, and Ashley Stebbings. Got a special guest here in the announcing booth. I got Brett Sands of Australia. Here we go. 
Alex Youngblood coming up forward. Uh, Brett, I don't know if you can see the screen very well, but if you want to go ahead and call the run, go ahead. Yeah, Alex is a young up-and-coming skier in the United States. She's, a, she's awesome. There's no doubt about that. Really hard to see her on this screen here, but there goes one cross. She's back for a couple. Needs to get on that edge and stay on that edge through the wake. She's looking really good here through number four. Fantastic skiing. Some of these girls will just be getting the score on the board, Rod, just to get them into that um, semi-final round. And that's a really solid run there from Alex. She's impressive. I haven't seen this girl ski live before, and that was an outstanding run. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Brett, for uh, helping out there and calling that run out. But, yeah, thir hitting in the 13s, Alex is skiing. She's been spending a lot of quality time down at the World Barefoot Center with the crew down there, really uh, working hard on her skiing. Uh, waiting, I think we might be getting a first pass score here. Um, but, yeah, starting to get those scores up in the, you know, 13, four, close, getting close to that 14 mark. Um, we saw her trick earlier today, did an outstanding job on the tricks, so starting to get her turns, um, good, solid, consistent jumper. Uh, no stranger to the medal podium at the Worlds and Junior. She uh, went home with some hardware in 2016 and, and expect to see uh, kind of the same thing out of her here in Canada. Yeah, no doubt, Rod, she'll be after a little bit more this time, you know, a couple of years older and a little more mature, and um, those guys down at the World Barefoot Centre have actually been... Um, you know, getting these young girls into it. So that's really, really good. And um, looking forward to the big shootout at the end here with Alex and then Lexi and then Brooke, Georgia and Ashley. So, you know, the women's overall title kind of starts this afternoon as the men's um, starts in the jump. So, you know, things are, you know, on day one's going to, you know, it's already going to be a little bit of a storyline by the close of it today. Amen, brother. It's going to get wild and crazy here. Stick around for the rest of the week. We've got... Alex Youngblood coming up on pass number two, setting up on the right side of the wake backwards. There's a nice one-foot cross. Good transition coming back on number two is good. Three is good. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Yeah, nice job. Yeah, it's a, that was a great run. Very cons very consistent rhythm going there. Kind of a nice upbeat tempo. Um, gonna be uh, gonna be a solid. Uh, you know, probably I didn't get a first pass score, but I would guess she's probably hitting in that 13 range where she has been lately. 6.1 on her second pass. Yeah, I think she'll be pretty happy with that. Uh, we, like I say, we saw the, the junior girls uh, trick earlier today. We're going to uh, – Alex is going to get another chance, um, well, a couple possible chances. Again, we're taking uh, the top nine skiers in this event for the next round, the preliminaries. And then, of course, Alex will get a chance to wake slalom when the junior girls go out in, in the uh, preliminary rounds as well. So a lot of skiing for, for uh, the skiers who are seniors and juniors and crossing over and qualifying to ski in the open and qualify I mean well worth the trip the the wetsuit never dries does it when you're uh, in that situation yeah and I'm one of those guys right I'm doing the open and the seniors so I jumped this morning with the guys you know our our first round's over for the seniors but I'm in the C group in open men's jump so I've got to go out again this afternoon to do it but I'm I'm just uh, one of uh, many that'll be doing it and these young girls here will um you know They'll be nearly using these rounds as practice rounds as well. You know, what they need to work on something to get their their scores right for the other division and vice versa. So um, interesting tactic. Um, I haven't been at a world that's, you know, it's been a long time since I've been out of the sport. We didn't do that back when I stopped skiing. So, but we've got another US um, team skier on the water now, Lexi McCauley. She's already been out this morning in the girls. Le uh, here we go, Lexi coming up forward. Setting up in the curl, there's first cross, second, third, fourth, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, nice skiing. Good consistent pace, nice, did a great job picking up and setting down nice and clean. Um, that's a solid run. You know, Lexi's a person that started just here at the Nationals for the first time, cracked 15, 
at Wakeslaw, and that's a personal best. Uh, her skiing just keeps going up and up and up. And Yeah, we think uh, we think we heard a six point five on the first pass from the boat. We're going to have kind of a changing of the guard on the the world junior girls stage. We've got a couple young ladies that. Um, 17 year olds that'll be moving on to the open division well they're skiing open now but in the 2020 worlds in australia uh we're gonna have to backfill with some talent uh some of these girls are going to be moving into the open division only and we've got to fill the pipeline at the junior level so young skiers boys and girls alike work hard on your game Here we go, Lexi McCullough on the water. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. I don't see anything. Some nice one foot crosses there. Good pace going for Lexi. Yeah, stand up pass, Lexi McCulley. Okay, it's back. So seven point zero on Lexi's second pass. We think it was six. We heard something point five from the boat on her first pass. So we're not sure whether it was a six five or a seven five. So she's going to end up in that thirteen and a half to fourteen and a half range, and that's going to put her pretty close to um, number one off the dock so far with uh, Brooke Finch, Georgia Growing. <laughs> Come in and post. In, this is in the open women's division. Just a great effort. Came in and skied a 15.6 to capture the bronze medal. That's a great score. <laughs> if, if, whether you're a male or female, that is a great score. 15.6. Yeah, that's awesome, right? Isn't it? Like, once you get into that 15 to 16 range, you know anything could happen. So maybe, you know, it's been a couple of years since then. So maybe Brooke can push herself up, you know, into the 16 and 17s. She knows that Lexi and um, Alex will be right there, you know, this year, those young girls. But here comes Brooke French. Come on, Kiwis, up on your feet. We're going to call this one. Really hard to see the TV monitor up here and the judges' table. Where we're going to get onto it. Here she goes, guys. Yeah, nice and clean. One foot cross there to get one going. There's another one that is clean. That's perfect. She looks good. She's got a nice rhythm. There's four. She's on a seven pace here for sure. Back for five. Great pass. Heading over to seven. Yeah, that's a great run there, Rod. She, I think she's in the seven-plus range there, and they looked all pretty clean from what I could see. Wow, that's beautiful skiing right there. And I'm looking at the scores. So in 2018, back-to-back -back tournaments, 16.2 for Brooke Fitch um, at the Wellington Regionals and then did it again at the Cato Regionals, 16.2, and then backed it up with a couple 15.4s back-to-back. So super consistent skier at a high level. But, uh, you know, 16 is going to be enough to, if she can ski that, I got to believe she's got a great chance at repeating as a medalist at this year's Worlds in this event. Yeah, absolutely. And she'll know the two American girls right there, um, Alex and Lexi, and obviously Savenia's um, Hempelman from Germany is pretty good. So all those girls are improving. So, m yeah, I would think that um, Brooks had um, it in her mind for a little while now that, you know, she might need more than a 15 and a half or so this time. She might need to be pushing into those 16s. So... Yeah. And, um, she might be m waiting for one of those, um, you know, the rivalry between Georgia and um, Ashley, you know, in that final. The pressure's on, you know, and Georgia, po um, if Brooke can po post a good score and put a little pressure on one of those girls, be interesting. And uh, young skiers, too. I mean, you look at uh, uh, Brooke, 21 years old, uh, 
a lot of lot of skiing left in her future. Georgia, 21, I believe, just turned 21 this year. So, man, things are uh, things are on fire in New Zealand. They've got some young talent that are blowing the stacks off these events with the the points they're putting up. Uh, I'd say the Kiwis got a pretty bright future in the sport. Yeah, I think I, I would say probably in the last five years the the Kiwis have been, um, you know, their top scares have been ranked higher than they ever have been in the world. You know, obviously with Ben in the Open men's being the top three or four, you know, Georgia and then Brooke and, you know, they've got some serious skiers, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, I don't think they had those, you know, a lot of top 10 skiers, but now they're really, you know, there's, some, there's been a lot of work done by the Kiwis and I take my hats off to those guys, you know, the, the climate in New Zealand's not quite as good as, you know, what they have in Florida and stuff like that. Anyway, here's Brooke Rod. Yeah, she's flying back there, crossing uh, one foot's left and right, right, right to left, and just flying, throwing it down. That was a beautiful run. Yeah, Another great effort. That that's uh, I'll tell you what, boy. You know, we just said consistently 15, 16. I think we just saw it again. Going to be right there where she's. Yeah, seven point eight rod, solid pass, seven point eight. So my guess here, we didn't get a score on the first pass from Brooke, but we're guessing in the seven to eight range. So she's going to be floating around that 14 to 15. You know, nice nice score for the first round. Um, that'll probably get her in the final if she does that in round two, and then she's going to have to lay it on the line in the final, my guess is. Yeah, definitely a good score to, to seed yourself near the top there coming into the next round. Um, give us a, give us give give the crowd and, and the people online a little bit of a, a, a background here. So... We're going to go from this into the semifinals, from the semifinals into the finals. So we know that this g this pairs the group of 15 down to nine. But yep. tell the crowd and the people, uh, Brett, what does the score from this round does this carry forward to the seeding score for the finals as well? Yeah, possibly could, right? I think that's the way it goes. I've been out of it a while, but I think they take the first, second, and third place getters in the next round, and then the next two top scores from either of the first two rounds. So. Just, just say Brooke, you know, unfortunately went down early in the second round. Her 15 or 14 now would count and should it'd probably carry her through. So Yeah, that's yep. exactly the way I interpreted it, Brett, and, and the way it's stated in the rule book. So uh, thanks for sharing that. And that's what really makes this exciting. If it, you know, it, it, can do, it can go a lot of different ways for the, for the fourth and fifth people in. If, uh, you know, this round it really is a big factor yep. for those, for the fourth and fifth person on the bubble one two three as you mentioned they're in they'll typically get into the finals um so we're uh looking at georgia growing georgia. rod come on team kiwi the current world's women overall champion this is the start of her title defense georgia grown coming forward setting up on the uh right side of the wake as from a judge's view crossing from her left to right back uh pass number two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, great pass wow. there, Rod. Great pass by Georgia. She's going to want to put a little bit of heat on Ashley early, you know what I mean? But I think the girls will be smart in this round. They need to make sure they get a nice, solid score for the first round. You know, post, you know, like anywhere between maybe 16 and a half and 18 you know and just make sure they're they're in the competition for these couple of girls that'll probably advance them to the final irrespective of what happens in round two but um seven point five there for georgia she has been attacked on one of those she's been clipped on one of those back ones so an early down by the sound of it um she's going to have to work hard here i've been skiing with ashley for the last couple of weeks here on Dream Lake and um, I really think Ashley's on for this tournament and um, her slalom has been outstanding and um, yeah so I think it's going to be it's going to be a ripper between these two girls but uh, George is not going to give this title away lightly I can tell you that she's been uh, in Australia for a few months she's been on the west coast of the US for a couple of months she's put you know, apart from all the work she's done in her summer back in New Zealand, she's really put her um, head down over the last four or five months and um, she knows that um, Ashley's going to come out swinging at this Worlds after the last one. And um, a 7.5 there, so it sounds like she may have uh, got cut on a cross. And, you know, she really needs to work hard here to um, even, you know, push 
um, Brooke down to second place. Georgia Groen, that's our, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Brett, so we have, uh, we, we crowned Georgia the overall women's open, uh, the elite division champion in 2016, coming back here to defend her title. Had some great scores, skied in 18.2 uh, this year in, in the Vic Pre-States um, here, she, here she comes tournament. now, Rod. Right. There she goes. She's onto it. There's a couple for Georgia. They look pretty clean. She's going to at least want to get eight here to get her in that 15 to 16 range. Beautiful pass. Keep it going, Georgia, all the way to the end, girl. Yeah, nicely done. Yeah. Gets it done. I don't know whether Georgia will be super stoked with that. You obviously, you know, the girls, it, no one really wants to lose a cross. Rod, you know, getting um, cut by the judges, you know. it's She's, she's definitely going to be maybe wanting a little bit more than that in the semifinals for her overall. But that'll be in the 15 to 16 range overall, I think. Yeah, that's a good score. That's definitely going to get you... A pretty good seed, high seed. You know, uh, I think the three tops that we mentioned, that's the order they finished at, at the last World Championships. I think um, it's starting to shape up like that might continue to be the seeding. Maybe. Uh Thursday, and then uh, we'll we'll ski it up on the finals over. I think Saturday is when the the women's tie it up. So it's going to get the skiing just gets better. It gets more intense. There's more at stake as the week goes on. So haul yourself out here. You're going to see some spectacular skiing. And here we go. Final skier in the group, uh, fellow Aussie. You know much about this skier, uh, Ashley Stebbings. We got a few records. Uh, Every time out, this girl sets a record, it seems. Been doing it for a long time. I just keep watching the scores go up. Yeah, she's she's pretty awesome. Rod, we were having a chat the other day about it in the boat, Pete O'Neill and myself. And we Chief Judge, just letting you know, we are offering a re-ride. We were 1.5. Georgia Groen's getting a re-ride on her second pass. That's a pretty gutsy move by George. This, it was a speed, a fault in the speed. They got a little bit hot. It sounded like it was... I'm not sure that whether they said 1.5 miles an hour or 1.5 kilometres an hour over, but that's only a 1K tolerance. So as soon as you tip over that one kilometre um, under or over that speed tolerance, it's a, it's a um, you can choose to a re-ride or not. So obviously Georgia's maybe not super happy with that pass. She didn't, I wouldn't say she looked super comfortable then, Rod, coming back. She was just down a little bit on her toes and working a little bit hard. So... Maybe uh, she'll be able to fire things up this time. Yeah, Brett, as a skier, uh, you know, you look at, we're talking about seedings and what this means and going forward. So, you know, what Georgia just skied was a great score, and, and she's a lock already, you know, with that score to move to the to the next round. But, you know, psychologically as a skier, when you, you know, don't leave the water knowing you skied what you can ski, do um, you think part of what Georgia's thinking here is a mental play and that, I got to go out. I got to ski what I'm comfortable with because next time I'm on the water, I want to feel confident because I just skied. My previous round was a great round, and I'm wondering how much of that plays into the decision. Maybe you have some insight you can share with what you think George is thinking, taking that re-ride. Yeah, yeah, definitely that would have something to do with it, Rod. And the other side of the coin is she may have had a really poor pass then. You know, we can't see on the screen here real well. Um, with the speed out, she might have gone – you know, that was a really poor pass, and she's a few points down. Um, uh, my guess is if it was a fairly solid pass, even if the speed was out, she possibly would have just taken it and just worried about it in the next round. But um, Georgia, no, she's, a, she's an experienced campaigner, Georgia. She's going to probably come out, and she'll do, she should do better than that pass there for sure. Only she'll know that until we get back to the dock, and, you know, a few, few of the guys can have a chat to her. But um, certainly this won't be a mistake, I don't think, for Georgia. She knows what she's doing for sure. Yeah, one of the things you have to look at, too, is the conditions, and they're absolutely phenomenal right now. I mean, the water's glassed. It's laying down. It's flat. You know, and I'm sure if there were any question, questionable conditions, um, that would play into the decision. But here we go. Georgia Grown, re-ride, pass number two. Oh, that's a nice pace right there. 
Yeah, I think she's probably happy with uh, the decision she made taking that re-ride. That looked like a pretty hot run down the lake there. Yeah, she looked good. And like you said about the water conditions too, you know, if she if she thought she might have lost a cross or two on that last pass and comes up with a 14 or 15, Ashley comes out and slams a 17 and a half and an 18. And the next two rounds, the water's bad. And, you know, um, George is at two or three points behind Ashley and has got no chance to catch up. So Georgia, Georgia knows how to play this game. Her family's been in the sport for, you know, over 30 years. They know what's going on. She got a flat eight there on that one. So she's going to end up with about a 15.5. So a seven and a half and an eight's going to be a 15.5. Um, and I reckon Ashley here just, it's going to be hard to see what Ashley's going to do. Will she just take a foot off the pedal a little bit? Um, or will she lock horns from the word go, you know what I mean? Really throw it throw it down and try and post a, you know, 18, 18 and a half and really put Georgia behind the eight ball. It's going to be an interesting little scenario here with Ash Stebbings, you know. Um, sh she's probably the most one of the most experienced skiers here. She's um, broken world records in all events, juniors, open women, gold medals in all those events. One of the most decorated barefoot skiers we've ever seen. The girls... Not that old. It's a, it is absolutely crazy. I used to ski with um, Coach Dash just a little bit when she was really, really young, when she was starting out. I take absolutely no credit for the skier she is today, but um, really early days, one foots and tumbles and stuff, and um, she's a little ball. She, she's, a, she's a tough little nut, and um, she's going to go out here, and she's going to show you what she's going to do, Rod. She's an outstanding young skier, and she's going to uh, she knows exactly what's on the line here, but she needs yeah, to get a score on the board. Coming up. Left side of the wake facing the boat. And here we go, cross one. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we lost video, but looked like a good pace to me, Brett. Yeah, she's been hitting over eight in training all the time, Rod. You know what I mean? I reckon she's in that eight to nine range. I wouldn't say that pass there is as quick as what she's been doing in training, but I think she just, the girls have got to get that score on the board. Georgia and Ashley. Um, Georgia and Ashley know that when they, um, they just stand up in this pass, they're pretty much going to get, you know, a free, a, free, a free ride into the final if they really wanted it um, on the weekend, um, just with a nice solid pass. Um, I think round two is where, you, where you're going to see these two, two girls unleash a little bit, um, and then they're going to see where they're situated come, you know, Friday night right before the finals on Saturday when the team scoring's over, and um, their overalls are really, you know, on the line for Saturday. It's going to be it's going to be on for young and old, but um, it's going to be a great showdown. And don't count out those other couple of girls either, you know. Um, Lexi and Brooke and Alex. I know um, the way Lexi McCauley tricked this morning. You know, she's a little bit of a dark horse in this event. You know, th that those tr those trick runs for the women, you know, the, the tricks they do are, you know, high points, high risk. And um, anything can happen. And um, if Lexi's a smart girl, you know what I mean, and she can stand up a couple of solid runs, you just don't know, you know, stranger things that happen at a world championship, so I can tell you that. Yeah, Ashley in this event's just destroyed the record book over the years. And and it, I think about how long she's been setting these records. And, and even, you know, just a week ago, skiing at the U.S. Nationals, 18.6 uh, was... Uh, here she is, Rod. Okay, here we go. She's Second on. She's pass. back for about four there. She is on fire here. She's going to be in the 10 pace. She's absolutely on fire. Let's listen to here in Australia. There she goes. Wow. What a machine. Look at that. What a great run. Great. Ashley Stebbings, Australia. Wow, I was just saying, Brett, 18.6, though. I mean, 18.8 in 2016 was a pending world record for the women's, and, and just 18.6, she skied a week ago. So Ashley is, is uh, you know, we're, we're probably going to sit and witness another world record here this week in this event for her. She's just always putting up these numbers that just keep growing and growing and yep. there seems to be no uh, ceiling to what she can do. Yeah, she's um, she'll be into that 17 to 18 point range. Rod, I don't think it's going to be, you know, world record just at this point in the tournament. It's a little early. I think, you know, the girls would be somewhat... 9.0 Yeah, she got a 9... 9 she got a 9.0 9 flat. 
And we didn't get the score on her first pass, but let's say it was an eight. So she's going to be that 17. She, she'll have a she'll have a point or two buffer on Georgia, I would think. Um, but great passes by those girls. Really, really outstanding effort. Brooke, Brooke it's going to be interesting between Brooke and Georgia, I reckon, Rod. Um, yeah, I don't know where... Uh, Brooke was. She had that 7.8. We didn't get her other score, but it'll be pretty tight between Georgia and Brooke, the two Kiwis, but outstanding effort by the women. And now we're going to slot into men's um, C jump. My second jump uh, event for the day. And then we're going to slide into the men's B jump. You're going to get a little few more serious jumpers in that division. You'll get a couple of guys in there, you know, into that 25 and 26 metre range. And, um, you know, the men's overall will slowly start to unfold today, even though it's early days. I'm just looking right now, Brett, at the at the current ratified world records. So these are the ones that have gone before uh, the, the, the World Barefoot Council, been reviewed, everything's been, you know, basically ratified and approved. But the current record for Wake Slalom, 17.2, that Ashley set, uh, this had been in 2014 at the AO Barefoot Championship. So... We're seeing a lot of scores at 18. I think this week is going to be history, you know, for, for Ashley. The way she's skiing and, and how many 18 she's hitting lately with a record of where she put it at 17-2. I think we're just going to witness uh, more history here this week. Yeah, I, I said that 